All right, welcome again. We are doing lesson 101 today, lesson 101, which is tables and schedules. Lesson 101, tables and schedules. Okay, so let's go to example one. Really for tables and schedules, all you need to know how to do is read a table. So I'm gonna teach you today how to read a table. So let's just go straight to the examples and then we'll kind of just talk about how to read it as we go, okay? So heights of major mountains is what this table is about. Looks like under this category right here, mountain, it gives you the name of the mountain. And then this tells you how tall it is in feet. This tells you how tall it is in meters. So when we're reading the question, we need to make sure we look at the right column, right? The Matterhorn is how many meters taller than Pikes Peak? So the Matterhorn, so we're talking about Matterhorn here and Pikes Peak here. And then how do we know? Do we do feet or meters? Well, since the question says meters, that's probably what we're gonna do, okay? So the Matterhorn is how many meters taller than Pikes Peak? So we're gonna go with Matterhorn meters, which is 4,478. How many meters taller? Which means we're subtracting Pikes Peak, which is 4,301, okay? Do you understand how to find that information in the table? Okay, Everest, Mount Everest is 29,035 feet. You see how I can see that? I'm looking at the table. I found that information by looking at Matterhorn and then going across to figure out how many meters it was. And then I looked at Pike's Peak. I went across to figure out how many meters Pike Peak, how tall it is in meters. Okay, so we're going to subtract to find how many meters taller Matterhorn is than Pike's Peak. Eight minus one is seven. Seven minus zero is seven. Four minus three is one. Four minus four is zero, so it is 177 meters taller than Pikes Peak. Matterhorn is 177 meters taller than Pikes Peak. Okay, that's the answer to that one. And the next one is McKinley is how many feet taller than Kilimanjaro? McKinley is how many feet, oh, this time we're doing feet, so I'm gonna go to McKinley and then go across to feet find feet. So McKinley is 20,320 feet. McKinley is how many feet taller than Kilimanjaro? Kilimanjaro is 19,340 feet. So I'm going to subtract 19,340. We're trying to figure out how much taller one mountain is than the other. We're not going to add them up because the two mountains aren't sitting on top of each other. That's crazy. So we're gonna subtract the numbers so that we figure out how many feet taller is McKinley than Kilimanjaro, okay? Zero minus zero is zero. Two minus four, whoops, can't do that. Make that a two, make that a 12. 12 minus four is eight. Two minus three, whoops, can't do that. And I cannot borrow from my zero there. So I'm gonna borrow from my two, make that a one, and make that a 10. Then I'm gonna borrow from the 10, make it a nine, and make that a 12. 12 minus three is nine, nine minus nine is zero, and one minus one is zero, so I don't really need those zeros. All I need is 980 feet. Don't forget to label your answer there. Feet, 980 feet is what we're talking about here, okay? 980 feet. Now we are going to move on to example number two. It's on the next page. Okay, so if you have your book with you, you just go to the next page. We're going to read a schedule like this. Leeming follows this schedule on school days. Okay, so she wakes up at 6.30. What does she do at 6.30? Well, first she wakes up, then she gets dressed, and then she eats breakfast. Uh, what does she do at 5 o'clock? Look at the schedule, see if you can tell me what she does at 5 o'clock. Ah, she plays at five o'clock. Man, it's almost five o'clock. I wish I could go play. All right, what does she do at 8.30? She takes a shower. Good. What does she do at 3.30? Starts her homework. Good. Do you see how I'm reading the schedule? I'm just looking at what time, and then I'm going over to the side to figure out what does she do at that time, okay? So we are going to figure out 
the answer to this question. It's going to require a little bit of elapsed time, which is one of our favorite things, isn't it? If lunch and recess together last 45 minutes, then how many hours does Li Ming spend in class? Okay, so we need to figure out what part of her day is school. And then we're going to subtract the lunch and recess part because the rest of the time she's in class. Okay, so when she's when she wakes up and eats breakfast, is she in class? No. If she leaves for school, is she in class? Not when she's leaving for school, no. What about when school starts? Is that a good place to start? Yeah, so we're gonna start right here. We're gonna forget about this stuff up here because she's not in school during that time, so we don't really care about that. So school starts at eight o'clock, okay? School ends right here at 2.45. So we need to figure out how much time elapse, elapses between eight o'clock and 2.45, okay? In between eight o'clock and 2.45. So we're gonna kind of use the three times that we have right here, because I think that's the perfect way to break it apart, okay? So let's look at this. In between eight o'clock and 12 o'clock is eight plus what is 12? Four. So that's four hours, okay? In between eight and 12 is four. Then in between 12 and 2.45 is how much time? Well, you go from 12 to one o'clock, that's one hour. From one o'clock to two o'clock, that's two hours. So we've got two hours and we get from two o'clock to 2.45, how many minutes is that? 45 minutes, right? So how much time is she at school? Four hours plus two hours and 45 minutes. So four hours plus two hours is six hours and 45 minutes, okay? But our question is asking us, if lunch and recess together last 45 minutes, then how much time does she spend in class? So we're gonna subtract the 45 minutes of lunch and recess, so minus 45 minutes. This is a simple problem. What's 45 minutes minus 45 minutes? Nothing, so then we just bring down our six hours. Okay, and zero minutes, you can write that part if you want. You don't have to, it's just six hours is the answer to that problem. Okay, so that is all we're going to do in the book today. I have one more chart that I want to show you and I'll just ask you a couple questions about it and just see if you can, if you can solve some of these problems, okay? And then if you can solve these problems on your own, I think you will be ready to do your homework if you stay and listen to the rest of this, this will help you with your homework because you will see something very similar to this on your homework, okay? So this looks like we've got some continents here. We've got some area, the area of the continent. So how much space it takes up. Looks like we can figure out the number of countries for each continent and the population as of 2011. So that was a little bit, a little bit ago. Um, about nine years ago, but that's how many people lived in each of those continents about nine years ago, okay? So I want you to look at this. I'm gonna ask a few questions, see if you can find the answers. What continent has zero countries? The continent that has zero countries is Antarctica. That is correct. We've talked about that before, right? Antarctica, nobody lives there, super cold. All right, what continent has 43 countries? What continent has 43 countries? Hopefully you said Europe, that is correct. As we can see right here, Europe has 43 Oh, let's click right here, yep. 43 countries, and so we go over, we see 43 and then we come over and we see, oh look, that's Europe. 43 countries is Europe. All right, let's do the next question. Ooh, this is a good one. How many continents are there? Ooh, how could we solve this problem? Because it's not going to be, I mean, there aren't 54 continents. There aren't zero continents. This, this is countries. So how do we figure out how many continents there are? Well, if you can count on your hands, I think you could solve it, right? We've got one continent, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. We have seven consonants. There you go, right there. Okay. Uh, what's another question they could ask? Let's say, which continent has a population of 31 million? Which continent has a population of 31 million? So we don't look at area. We don't look at number of co countries. We're going to population because it says which country has a population of. So we look under population. Try to find 31 million. Oh, there's 31 million. So what continent is that? Oh, that's Australia plus Oceania. So Australia and Oceania, you just put Australia. That would be the answer for that one. All right, I'm gonna give you one more question. Which country, sorry, continent, which continent has the biggest area? Which continent has the biggest area? So if we're talking about area, we know we're in this, in this column, okay? So look down, which has the biggest area? I'll give you a hint. You're looking for the biggest number. The biggest area will be the one in the area column with the biggest number, okay? This is about 11 million. This is about 5 million. This is about 17 million. This is about two, well, probably closer to 3 million. This is less than a million, 837,000. This is about 9 million, and this down here is about 6 or 7 million. So which one of those is the biggest number? 17 million. 212,000 is the biggest area. So which continent has the biggest area? Asia is the continent with the biggest area. Okay. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, when you do your homework today, you're going to have to look at some charts and you're going to have to answer some questions about those charts, okay? So if you know how to read this chart, if you're able to answer those questions, I think you'll be set. I think you'll be good to go. If you wanna go back and watch some of this video again, um, you can do that. The questions on your homework will be more like the ones that we just did at the end than the ones at the beginning. The ones at the beginning were a little bit harder. Still important for you to know those things, but we made the homework a little bit easier for you. So good luck on the homework and we will talk to you soon. Bye.